before the break, we discussed the issue of the Temple Mount, which has become linked to those ministers in the new government, primarily Finance Minister Betzela Smotrich and the National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Vir, who came into office all after long advocating that Jews be allowed to openly pray in that holy compound. Now, other views held by Smotrich and Ben-Vir have been deemed extremist, including remarks on Israel's Arab and LGBT communities. That's raised the question of whether officials from other governments, especially Western governments, would be willing to meet through those two now senior ministers. Well, according to a report today in Axios, a group of seven Republican and Democratic senators now visiting Israel, and all of them strong supporters of it, have informed the government they don't want to meet Smotrich or Ben Gvir or any members of their respective parties. Well, for more, let's go to our senior U.S. correspondent, Mike Wagenheim, who is in Washington, D.C. today. And Mike, uh, looks like uh, some uh, tough love, at least for uh, those particular ministers from not just Democrats, but also some top Republicans in Congress. It's tough, and I'm not sure in some cases if it's love at this particular point, uh, Kalev. Uh, the Abraham Accords Senate Caucus uh, visiting uh, the Abraham Accords countries this week, Morocco, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates. The last stop is Israel, and the Axios News site reporting uh, that the uh, co-chair of the Abraham Accords Caucus on the Senate side, Senator Jackie Rosen of Nevada, insisted beforehand uh, that there would be no meetings set up with Israeli officials that would involve any members of the uh, far-right uh, religious Zionism parties uh, or uh, Otsma Yehudit party. Uh, that, of course, uh, includes Inamar Ben-Gvir, the uh, national security minister, and the current finance minister, Betzelo Smotrich. Uh, there have been indications from uh, several senators in the uh, past here, whether publicly or privately, that they want ex essentially the same accommodations, that if they were to visit Israel, they would not want to meet uh, with these particular ministers, uh, Bob Menendez, senator from New Jersey, has been a longtime supporter of Israel, almost uh, uh, blindly uh, uh, put forth to Benjamin Netanyahu, according to reports a couple months ago, that uh, he needed to uh, rethink exactly who he, he was going to give powers to in his government when it came to the likes of Smotrich and Ben Vier. Uh, Rosen, by the way, also a longtime supporter of Israel, very, very rarely critical in any circumstance of Israel, a former reform uh, a congregation uh, president in Henderson, Nevada herself. And so that's fairly noteworthy when the likes of Menendez and Rosen uh, don't want to meet with certain members of the Israeli government. Right. I think it's even more noteworthy that some of the Republicans apparently are included in that. I mean, I presume there will be Republican members of Congress who would be willing to visit those, uh, uh, those ministers, and we may, may yet see that in the coming weeks. But certainly that is something uh, it's worth noting that even anybody in the GOP Congressional Caucus would take that stand. Yeah, we heard, uh, you know, about a week, week and a half ago from Senator Lindsey Graham, who was concerned about some of the policies that were uh, being advanced. It hasn't gotten to the point, at least that I've heard, that a, a Republican has directly uh, made the request or demand not to meet with uh, particular officials uh, from the Israeli government. Those direct requests have come from the Democratic side. But yes, that does have a trickle-down effect, and especially when you're going as a delegation, especially a bipartisan delegation, you want to show unity when the leader of that delegation, be it a, a Democrat a Republican sets the tone while everybody else kind of falls in line and it tends to send that message that, you know, there's persona non grata within the Israeli government.